Hi, welcome. I'm going to be submitting a Linux kernel patch with B4, and uh, uh, you can watch me do this. It's going to be an actual patch. It's going to be go out the actual mailing list. Um, and if you've ever wanted to submit a very short patch to the Linux kernel, but you just didn't want to bother setting up Git send email and all the other work, uh, doing all the other work, then please feel free to watch this. Hopefully, you'll uh, find this process easier than um, what is recommended currently upstream. Now, this is with B4. B4 is a tool I wrote. It's used primarily by Linux kernel maintainers. To to retrieve patches from mailing list, but one of the newer features in O10 in O11 versions of before is ability to also submit patches and submit entire series and do complicated things like retrieve trailers, apply trailers, um, roll to the next version of the um, of the series, etc. So, but in this video, very short, I'm going to fix a uh, typo spelling in one of the files that I found. It's a bug that's been reported a long time ago. Uh, but never really got fixed. So I'm going to submit a patch for that and uh, hopefully it'll get applied. All right, so this is a very standard Ubuntu 22.04 installation. The only things I've done to it is I cloned um, Linux to this so we don't have to sit and watch it. It's the latest as of December 21, uh, 2022. The other thing is that I configured uh, bash rc i think yeah i added a path to dot local dot bin you'll see why we need that in a moment and i set up editor as vim because that's just how i roll okay and uh, the first thing that we'll need to actually get anything done is to install before which can be done with pip and if i actually type it correctly there we go it retrieves and installs. Everything is done. The version is importantly should be 0.11.1. If you have any other prior version, like there's a B4 that ships with Ubuntu, that is older version, I believe, then you probably want to uh, get the latest one. All right, uh, let's go over here. First thing we'll need to do is to create a topical branch in which you're going to be working. So uh, I'm going to be working on a typo fix where a word, a label is misspelled. So I'm going to start with before prep in, and the name of the topical branch is going to be uh, Lan Yang Label Fix. And I'm going to fork it from v6.1 because generally upstream folks want to see you f sort of base your patches not on some random place in the head, but uh, off of the, the latest tag. So latest tag, as of the time of writing, is v6.1. So I'm going to fork it from there. It's going to turn a little bit. And I think it's going to complain at me that I didn't set up my user.name and user.email. That's right. All right. You will already probably have this done, because if you are committing things to Git all the time, you don't have a blank username and user email. So let me go ahead and do that. All right. So user name, email. I'm going to use my uh, personal email for this, because it's easier for me to check it later. I'll show it to you why. All right. Let's try it again. This goes through the process of creating a new branch and creating a templated cover letter, which we can see. So it said create a new branch before slash whatever we called it. And then we are able to see in Git log exactly what happened. So this is the cover letter. It's going to be at the start of our series. It's just kind of random info. There is a uh, tracking info there, this JSON, as you can see, and there's the tag that we've branched it off. So really, we only have one commit here so far, and that's our cover letter. All right, now for the actual fix. Let me go show you where that bug is. Uh, it's an arch arm boot DTS. Yeah. Let me go edit that file. All right, uh, let me see if you notice anything wrong with this. Label, 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 label. Yeah, that's probably not right. Yeah, it's been there for a while, I would guess. Nobody noticed, but it is clearly a bug because, you know, uh, it's possible that this is not a bug. It's intended to be label, but I'm just going to assume that it's not, and I'm going to submit it upstream. So I'm going to save this. Tiny, tiny bug fix. 
very common for a, somebody who's just been poking around the next kernel to notice something. And they're like, well, I should probably submit a bug, fi bug fix for this, but uh, I don't want to bother because it's too complicated. Right? Right? No, it's not right. Right. Let me show you how to do it. So, git diff. There we go. This is the extent of our patch. I'm going to add that. Commit with sign off. All right. Now, I actually prepared this so we don't watch me type. Uh, lovely. This is the commit message that I'm going to use. All right, the title, so Lanyang fix lovely to label typo. Uh, fix an obvious spelling error in the ETS file for Lanyang BMC. This was reported via Bugzilla a few years ago, but never fixed. This is true, and I'm actually going to show that it's reported by this person. Thank you very much. It's uh, There's a link to the bug. We can follow that and see it. And this is my signed off by, so that I, I'm signing off on this code. Looks good. If you look at the git log, you'll see this is our cover letter. It's still there. And this is our commit. So, so this is a single patch. We don't actually have a series per se. So we don't need a cover letter, but it's kind of handy to have. And I'll show you why. It's going to edit the cover. It allows us to actually edit the contents of the cover letter. If we were sending a series, we would describe what the actual series is about in here. But for now, I'm just going to say fix obvious error. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. Boom, boom, bonk. Just going to leave that there. You'll see that uh, this got edited. The tracking information is still there. It's kind of get a, gets appended by before uh, in the process of this. All right. So going to back to the top level. Uh, stat shows that everything is get status shows that everything is good. Yeah. So next step is we're going to see um, a dry run of before send. I'm going to say, hey, before, uh, show me what the patches would look like if I were to send them. Aha, he says, you know, we uh, for actually submitting this, we need to sign our patches crypto cryptographically. This is required by the uh, by the uh, web submission endpoint that we're going to be using. So this is actually very straightforward. Everything is already installed. All we need to do is say gen key. This creates a ED25519 key pair that I'm going to be using to sign the patches that I'm going to submit. It gets checked by our submission endpoint, and we will register the key in a moment. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to edit my git config as it instructs me to. Paste it right there. That's all I need to do. That's the extent of my configuration file that I will need to use, just the user and patat setting. All right, let's try it again. There we go. It says uh, he wrote, wrote out a TMP to send, and there should be one file in there. Let's go there. Let's look at that file. You see, it's from me. It says a date. It's got a subject. Everything that needs to be uh, to submit the patch. It's got some tracking information that we preserve for internal purposes. It says it was sent with that. Uh, there's a sign signature, developer signature. It actually cryptographically signs the entire contents of the patch. So that if you know, if anybody wants to tamper with it, it will be very obvious for anybody who checks this. Now, there's something here that's important. That, that uh, look at the two. Uh, there's no CC, there's only two people in there. It's Jens, the person who submitted the initial report, and me. Obviously, if I just to send this like off like this, this wouldn't get to anybody who is uh, who needs to actually pay attention to this. So, uh, we're going to collect everybody who Linux kernel thinks should be the, re the recipients of this patch. Uh, execute command out of two CC going to go and use a special script that ships with Linux kernel sources called getmaintainer.pl. It's going to look at the sources of the patch and say, uh, as far as I know, uh, the following people should be added to twos and to cc's. Now, it gets added to the cover letter. It's right there. If I was certain that, for example, one of these people didn't need to get this patch, I would remove them. But instead, I'm just going to add my uh, work address here. Say this, send it also to me, not just to my personal address, but also to my work address. Now, if I were to rerun before send, 
over there. Now I look at this patch, you will see that all the twos and all the CCs with my personal and my work address got filled out correctly. And it's still signed and everything. It's going to look through the patch to make sure everything looks good. You should do this. One last step we should do is there is a uh, sort of a sanity checking script called checkpatch.pl. I'm going to run that, make sure. And I'm going to say to send. Okay, so zero errors, zero warnings, which is not crazy because it's only, you know, literally changing two letters in, um, in the patch. So uh, this is ready for submission. One last check that I'm going to do before I, before I submit everything. I'm going to use before send or reflect mode. Now, what this does, it says, um, all, this is who are in the two, the one people who receive this patch. These are all who are in CCs. These addresses will be filled out in the two and CC header of the message. Now, the important thing to realize is that when you submit an email to the mail server, the mail server doesn't care about the two NCC headers. It really cares only about the addresses that give it in the RCPT2 command. You don't need to know this, but reflect mode will fill out the headers correctly, but it will warn you here, I'm ready to send the above messages to just person in the from, which is me, in the reflect mode. Uh, it will explain what reflect mode is, and we'll use the web endpoint. I'm going to go with that in a moment. So reflect mode is the two NCC headers will be fully populated, but the only address given to the mail server for actual delivery will be my personal address. So addresses in two NCC headers will not receive this series, which is exactly what I want. I want to have this patch emailed to myself so I can do like a final check to look through if everything looks good. I say enter, but it's going to say, I try to submit it through the endpoint, but endpoint says, no matching key, please complete web auth for us, which is normal because I just generated this key, right? In the patat gen key. So I'm going to register this key with the endpoint and do the round trip email verification for this. So web auth new is the command that I'm going to use. It's going to say, we'll submit the new email authorization request to the endpoint. This is my name identity and this is the key information that I just generated. So I'm going to say sure. I submitted that and I'm going to look with Neomut at my inbox and it's right there already. See it just says hello I'm uh, so and so somebody probably you initiated a web endpoint verification routine for batch submissions. Please use this string with the instruction provided and this is good right? So it says, once you receive it, run before send web auth uh, verify. So challenge successfully verified. This says it basically checks that I own this email address and I'm able to receive this challenge and that this key that I just submitted is is correct key to use with this from address. All right, so I'm all good. And now if I use dash dash reflect, up reflected one messages. If I look back at Neomut should be there. There it is. Now you will notice something, something that's important that the reason I set this up for you to show. The from is going to be me via B4 submission endpoint, devnull plus magic at kernel.org. Now why is it doing that? It's because it, the endpoint cannot send email from my actual email address right here. I, wait. From um, that, right? because uh, that, that would violate DKIM, DMARC, anything, and the message would end up in spam. So it does the substitution. It says from will be uh, the this address, and it will move the actual from into the body of the message, which is kosher with git. Git is fine with this. It will say, okay, I see the in-body from. So when I'm applying this patch to the git tree, I'm going to use whatever says in there, right? And if we try to say somebody receives this message and they want to reply to me, there is a reply to set. So if I hit reply, it'll say reply to. It's not going to reply to um, the ad submission endpoint rewrite there. It's going to say directly to me. So it's going to see. Don't do that right now. And if I look at the headers, there's a DKIM signature for the kernel.org email. There's the from. 
See, it's got all the CCs, it's got all the twos. I can look at them and say this looks all sane. There's their reply to it. X original from came from me. So, uh, but, but but when you actually reply, you reply to this address instead, right? Good. So this is looking good. I'm ready to submit this. It's it in my hands because this is actually. And then when I submit this, this is going to go out to the actual uh, uh, maintainers of this. But it's time to do it. So I'm going to say before send. Got to remove dash dash reflect. Psych myself up and say all right, send it. And say I'm going to do the following. I'm going to send the above messages to actual recipients. Recipients, and if you look at the, all the people here, make sure that's the last check that these are the people who should be receiving this. I'm going to via this web endpoint, yeah, which we register to. All good. I'm going to tag and re-roll the series to the next revision. And I'm ready to do this. Enter. It's sent. Woo! All right, and it automatically what before just did. It automatically went and re-rolled the revision to the next v2 in case there is feedback which there normally is feedback from people saying you know hey um you have uh thank you for a patch but you should probably change this you probably change that maybe you break it up into two different patches which would be weird for this particular patch but sometimes they would say this the, this patch is too large and you try to logically break it down and this is when the having an actual cover letter starting out will will come in handy because if we look now at the cover letter, you see that it got added a little change log here, which already says, hey, um, changes in V2, you describe what change in V2, but here's also a link to V1. All right, um, not going to link to that, I'm going to click on that yet because it probably hasn't yet uh, propagated. But there you have it. If there's feedback, I can make changes to it. Uh, I can do the usual git operations. I can say amend. I can uh, rewrite this, re-modify uh, this. I can do rebase, uh, interactive rebase, do multiple patches, reorder patches, do anything I do, anything I want to do. But in the end, once the next revision is done, I would say send the next revision. I would say before send again, and it will tag the new revision. If nobody replies to me, I can also send resend um, v1 again, for example. But this is all. Um, uh, sort of advanced usage of before send. If you're interested in before, uh, there's a documentation, ample documentation, I would say. Go to before.docskernel.org. There is a contributor section there. You can look through it to see if this is something that you've been missing. Uh, if you notice, I didn't need to set up anything with SMTP submission. I still need to have an uh, email address. Uh, if you have a Gmail address, for example, you don't have to set up um, SMTP temporary uh, one-time password or whatever it is. Uh, you can just use the uh, web endpoint to submit this. <clears throat> if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, I also am looking for feedback from anybody who is actual contributor of this because all the feedback that I've received previously is from maintainers. <clears throat> And they have very strong opinions about how things should be. And I want to hear from newbies and from people who are occasional contributors only. Thanks for your time.